At least 40 people have been killed in Israeli airstrikes on the Gaza Strip in the last seven hours. Authorities in Egypt confirmed that at least six people were injured by a falling shell in the city of Taba, located near the border with Israel. And China's foreign minister Wang Yi called for deepened and comprehensive dialogue to stabilize relations between his government and the Joe Biden administration. Hello, welcome to From the South. My name is Belen de los Santos from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In the last seven hours, at least 40 people have been killed in Israeli airstrikes on the Gaza Strip. Once again, the occupation forces have directed their artillery at residential areas. Three family neighborhoods of the refugee camps of Nusaili and Khan Yunis were bombed several times. Pending the latest update of the health statistics, the new count brings the death toll closer to 8,000. International organizations have demanded an end to the aggressions against the civilian population, doctors, hospitals and journalists. And the Israeli Defense Forces confirmed on Friday the second incursion into the Gaza Strip in 24 hours. This time, the ground units were supported by armored vehicles, fighter jets and drones. The occupying army also reported attacks against Palestinian resistance positions in the Sushuga Iya area. Simultaneously, at around 5 a.m. local time, its gunboats attempted to carry out a naval maneuver near Rafah, but were repelled by air support and left the area. The Israel Defense Forces reiterated that these operations served to create better conditions in reference to the large-scale operation they have been announcing since the beginning of the Al-Aqsa flood operation. And meanwhile, on Friday in Israel, the alarms went off again over Tel Aviv and Haifa after a series of attacks by the Palestinian resistance. Hamas confirmed that it has started again firing rockets at Tel Aviv and the occupied West Bank. The spokesman of the Esesit al-Qassam brigades assured that it is a response to the crimes of the Israeli Zionist regime against civilians. On the other hand, the Israeli authorities announced that the Ben Gurion airport was closed after being hit by bombs and also confirmed damage in the city of Petak Tipak. And according to the Palestinian ambassador to the UN, Israel has killed more than 7,500 people in Gaza, 70% of them women and children. Riyad Mansour explained on Thursday that the occupiers' bombs have killed almost 5,300 women and children. It occurred during the first session of the General Assembly, convened in an extraordinary way by the organization, when the Arab diplomat demonstrated in concrete figures the extent of the genocide committed by Benjamin Netanyahu's government against the civilians of the Strip. Ambassador Mansour affirmed that around 3,000 children have been executed by the occupiers' attacks and more than 40% of the houses have been completely destroyed in 21 days of siege. And the United Nations warned Friday that many more will die as a result of Israel's ongoing siege of Gaza, which has caused sewage to flow on the streets of the Palestinian territory. People in Gaza are dying. They are not only dying from bombs and strike. Soon, many more will die from the consequences of siege imposed on the Gaza Strip. What needs more support? bakeries, water station, life support machine in a hospital, all this needs fuel to function. And the World Food Program warned on Friday that due to the constant airstrikes and lack of resources in Gaza, only two of the 24 bakeries contracted by the organization are operational and the remaining ones are struggling to meet the demand. The director of the World Food Program for the Palestinian Territories, Samer Abdelhaber, 
said that the factories are not functioning also due to lack of fuel and stressed that people are risking their lives and waiting for hours in the functioning bakeries for bread. In the sense, Samer Abdelacher assured that his organization is not able to meet the needs of all the people residing in the shelters. The UN World Food Program has 39 trucks waiting at the Rafah border in Egypt to enter Gaza, but the organizations point out that they will need to send 40 trucks every day into Gaza to feed the 1.1 mil people, million people there. In Gaza, bakeries are struggling to meet the demand due to lack of fuels. Mills are not operating also because of lack of fuel. People are risking their lives and queuing for hours in the bakeries that are functioning to secure bread. Many of them are going home empty-handed. The concept of a hot meal in Gaza doesn't exist for the time being. The bakeries contracted by WFP before the crisis were around 24. Today there are only two operating and simply were not able to meet the demand of all the people that are residing in the shop. In this context, people in Deir al abab in the Gaza Strip gathered to fill containers with water and fri on Friday, and others gathered on horse pull carts outside a water station as the need for water grows. The water station used to be able to pump out water 24 hours a day, but then it ran out of fuel, depriving nearby residents in Deir al abab of their main source of water. The United Nations delivered additional fuel recently to the station, allowing it to function just two hours a day from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. local time each morning. A lack of fuel means that sewage treatment facilities and desalination plants have stopped functioning. The UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, which provides basic services to hundreds of thousands of people in Gaza, said it has been forced to ration fuel among life-saving machines in hospitals, bakeries and desal desalination plants, and only has enough for a few more days. On Thursday, the United States government informed that it launched a series of attacks against alleged military bases in Syrian territory by orders of President Joe Biden. According to the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin added it was a response to a series of ongoing attacks against American personnel stationed in Iraq and Syria. The defense official also assured that the bases attacked belong to the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Since the beginning of the operation, armed com conflict in Palestine, various groups have expressed their allegiance to the cause by attacking illegal Pentagon bases in the Middle East, reportedly causing damage and injuries. On Thursday, authorities in Egypt confirmed that at least six people were injured by a falling shell in the city of Taba, located next to the border with Israel. According to local hospital sources, five patients have been discharged after receiving the necessary treatment, while medical personnel are trying to stabilize the sixth injured. An investigation committee of the security forces has arrived at the scene and has launched an investigation to determine the circumstances. The projectile has also caused significant material damage, including direct damage to a set of ambulance and residential buildings assigned to the medical team. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English where you will be able to find news in different formats, news updates and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. In Guatemala, the dialogue continues between the corporate sector's ancestral authorities and Bernardo Arevalo, president-elect. President-elect Bernardo Arevalo met on Thursday for the third time behind closed doors with representatives of the corporate sector and indigenous leaders, holding dialogues with them regarding the national situation. According to the vice president-elect, Karine Herrera, a consensus among the representatives has yet not been reached. However, progress has already been made and the leadership of the indigenous peoples has given recognition. 
In the same sense, Herrera added that it is very important that they meet in the same space, sharing the point of agreement and disagreement advancing in issues that need to be done to rebuild the country and development. We are happy to be here representing each one of the peoples and representing those Guatemalans who have the will to be here, but because of limitation to their work cannot do it, as well as the national civil police who have been very supportive of the people of Guatemala. We thank them as all the public officials who have also said that they give their support, but they are afraid of being persecuted and cannot make it public because the fear is what is influencing them. Let's not leave Guatemala. We are more and we have elected officials and we deserve respect. The president of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele, presented on Thursday his candidacy for a second term in office ahead of general elections on February 4, 2024. Bukele and his running mate, Vice President Félix Ulloa, filed their document with the Supreme Electoral Tribunal. The incumbent ruler announced last year that he would seek another term after the Supreme Court allowed him to run for re-election, sparking intense debate over his constitutional critics. Critics have questioned the legality of the second consecutive term. The Salvadorian constitution imposes single-term limits on candidates for presidential elections. Human rights groups and United Nations have expressed alarm over arbitrary arrests, inhumane prison conditions, and lack of transparency under Bukele's administration. Local media highlighted on Thursday that in Panama, police repression continues during the fourth consecutive night of protests against the mining contract between the state and the Canadian mining company. Protesters demand the repeal of the mining contract law 406, which would give a 20-year concession to the Canadian miner, which is considered unconstitutional by the judiciary. During the peaceful mobilizations, an infiltrator in the mobilization fired several shots into the air. While a strong police repression was registered where the policemen threw tear gas at the citizens, in this situation social organizations continue to join mobilizations in the country. And we go live to Palestine as the Israeli government and the Zionist army has announced intense and unprecedented attacks on the Gaza Strip and loud explosions are being heard. Currently, several areas of the Gaza Strip are under heavy bombardment and the connection to Gaza and the Internet are completely cut off. We are watching live images at Gaza where... A very important a very important bombardment has been announced by the Zionist army targeting the area. Let's recall that during the past weeks the attacks on Gaza have been ongoing according to the latest official numbers close to 8000 Casualties have been had on the Palestinian side. The, com the international community, as well as neighboring countries and the Palestinian authorities have continuously denounced the human rights violations and the war crimes sustained by the Israeli armies in this ongoing siege. What we're, what we're looking at now are live images of an unprecedented attack on the Gaza Strip, yet another one during this ongoing streak of days with heavy bombardment, which have caused up to now close to 8,000 casualties. Let's recall that most of these casualties in the Palestinian areas have been murdered women and children, those most affected by this 
directed attack on civilians. In Colombia, citizens are getting ready for the regional elections this Sunday, October 29th, which seeks to elect different authorities in the country. On October 29th, the Colombian population will carry out a democratic exercise in which the new departmental and municipal authorities of the country, who will govern from 2024 to 2027, will be elected. This election day is important for the government headed by President Gustavo Petro as it will frame the influence left by the series of reforms undertaken since his arrival to power. At the same time, it will define the pace that his legislative agenda will have to follow in the remaining time of his mandate. The position to be elected will be governors, deputies, mayors and councillors of all municipalities. It is estimated that approximately 39 million Colombians are qualified to elect those who will occupy some public positions in this period. And on Friday, San Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Ralf Gonsalves announced benefits for different sectors of society, including nurses, farmers and students, during his speech at the 44th Independence Day Parade. Gonsalves unveiled a package of measures during the national holiday, including an increase in the minimum wage in January and a non-taxable payment equivalent to 5% of the salary for nurses in certain categories. He also noted that families with debt owed to local hospitals will be granted exceptions and interest rates on student loans will be reduced. San Vincent and the Grenadines officially gained independence from Britain on October 27, 1979. I want you to listen to me particularly carefully as I make 16 specific announcements of real immediacy. First, as of January 2024, the salary threshold below which no personal income tax is charged will be increased from the current $22,000 annually to $25,000. Workers will pay less taxes as from January next year. In this context, Prime Minister Ralph Gonsalves also announced a new CELAC summit will be hosted next year on the nation as it holds the pro temporary presidency of this organism. Next year, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as the pro temporary president of CELAC, the community of states of Latin America and the Caribbean will host a summit here. CELAC, as you know, is the premier integration mechanism in our hemisphere, consisting of 33 member states. And we have come to a second short break, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, there you will be able to re-watch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Final short break, don't go away. Welcome back. China's foreign minister Wang on Friday called for a deep and comprehensive dialogue to stabilize relations between his government and the Joe Biden administration. The statements by China's top foreign policy official came in the context of a working visit to the United States. In addition to a meeting with his counterpart Antony Blinken, his agenda also included a meeting with Jake Sullivan, national security advisor to President Joe Biden. Wang Yi explained to the press that his country understands that differences will continue to arise, but he assured that good and bad are not determined by who has the strongest arm or the loudest voice. Part of Wang's agenda is focused on preparing for a visit by Chinese President Xi Jinping to the United States in November.
Serbia and Kosovo rejected the Council of Europe's latest proposals to advance in the agreement of normalization. On Thursday, the High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs, Joseph Borrell, confirmed the response of Serbia and Kosovo to the latest proposals for agreement on the normalization of relations between Belgrade and Pristina. The announcement was made during a meeting in Brussels where Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic and Kosovo Prime Minister Alvin Kurti held individual talks with French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni. At the end of the meeting, Borrell stated that the sites were not ready to accept the proposal without prior conditions. And in Bangladesh, the Director General of Health Services reported on Friday that the number of deaths from dengue fever exists 1,300 so far in the year 2023. According to a press release, 1,302 deaths from the disease caused by the bite of an infested mosquito were reported from January to the previous day. The health department reported that this is the highest number of deaths since the year 2000 when the first case of dengue fever was detected in the country. With the confirmed infections in the last 24 hours, the number of people infected amounts to more than 262,000. Of this figure, more than 254 have overcome the disease, while 7,000 are being treated in hospitals. And we have come to the end of this news brief. Before saying goodbye, we want to thank our Caribbean audience, especially the audience of Trinidad and Tobago. We are pleased to share our newscast and contribute to provide an alternative news source of the latest world events, tell you life stories of the people of the South, and break the hegemonic media dominance. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. Join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Belen de los Santos. Thank you for watching.